David Barnson with us for this hour. What's behind this rally, David? Well, it's 200 points, and it was down every day last week. Sure. And so I think that I expect this throughout the week, Stuart. There's so much uncertainty going into the election. A lot of traders are going to sit it out and just wait. I've seen it every presidential election of my investing life. There's a, a downtick in volume because people are waiting to get on the other side of it. But the, the, there has been a rally. Is it a Trump rally? Oh, I don't think you can call it a Trump rally or a Harris rally. It's a Republican Senate rally. The Republican looks so the, the Republicans look so good to take the Senate. That's a big part of markets. Well, our stocks up today because the investors think that the big tech re- earnings results are going to be solid. Um, I, the, last week would tell that story more. The Dow, I think, it's just kind of a comeback from last week. And again, I think you're going to get mixed results. And I think a lot of investors are expecting mixed results. Some companies outperforming, some underperforming. It's all about forward guidance. That's yes. The- it's the, it's the call, isn't it? Yeah. They give them your numbers looking backwards, and then it's the call looking forward. Exactly. That's what you go watch for. All right, David, thanks for being with us. Stay there, please. All right, now this. Some of Wall Street's top CEOs are reportedly backing away from Kamal Harris. Why do you think CEOs are drifting towards Trump? I think it's a good he's thing. he's going to win? Well, look, um, I want to tell a quick story. I got recruited as managing director to Morgan Stanley almost 20 years ago. My first day on the job, the CEO then, John Mack, who I loved, called and asked me to contribute to a Hillary Clinton dinner. I said, Mr. Mack, I'm a lifetime conservative Republican. He said, so am I. Hmm. He said, our job is to bet on the winning pony. It's good for these guys to not get too deep into Harris. They're obviously not getting deep into Trump. Play it back a little bit. They have to be pragmatic. They have shareholders to think about. They do indeed. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is praising Donald Trump for his plan to fund his own transition. Lauren, Can you tell me why Trump is funding his own transition? Um, Well, it's never been done before, and he can get a head start. So uh, RFK Jr. says by refusing the federal funding, Trump can start getting his team in place pretty early. You got any other reason in mind, David? Um, I think that the the mistakes made the last time, but also having Brooke Rawlins and Howard Lutnick, some of these people that are involved, they have the funding in place, private donors, and they're ideologically compatible with the conservative agenda. It's a good move. It's a very confident move, isn't it? Yeah, I like Brooke Rawlins. I like Howard Lutnick a lot, so I'm encouraged by some of the people behind it. Personnel is policy. $42 a share. Uh, Taylor Riggs joins us. Is this because of Trump's MSG brand? This is wild. It hit a record low of, what, $11, $12 a yeah. share on September 23. So five weeks later, less than that, you've now gone up. You've tripled in valuation. You're almost an $8 billion company, a $41, $42 stock. So, yes, traditionally, there hasn't been a lot of fundamental news, more tracking Donald Trump in the polls. D- David, you agree with that? Oh, no, no, you don't, do you? Do I think no. it isn't about fundamentals? No, I no, think no. Taylor's very right about that. But it's DJT they, uh, they a did way the same to bet revenue. They did 3.8 million of revenue. Uh, is DJT a way to bet on a Trump win? It, it's a way that traders think other people are betting on a Trump on a Trump win. So it's all speculation on speculation. And, Come on, I, I'm going to laugh if I keep talking about. I'm not this. asking you to invest in DJT because yeah. you wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot. There's pole, not even but... a fundamental connection to Trump winning the election with it. It's just a company that sets hundreds of millions of dollars on fire, and there's no path to changing that. If Trump wins, Twitter is still the big social media app for this. Okay, let's move on to Tesla. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is your story. They got a, t- a raise, a target price raise okay from who and to what can accord up to 298 from 278 saying that this is a company that they think in their opinion has a better way to now capitalize and grow their business also heighten expectations of a higher valuation on the horizon this is a company that's doing very well uh you're not saying anything about this there david um, I have nothing against Tesla. It's just very cyclical. It doesn't pay a dividend. And like she said, it, it has a lot of uh, uh, promise in the future, but it's very lumpy. It goes up and down a, a, a lot. And the valuation is still, I think, a little stretch. Any comment on McDonald's, David? Just one of the great dividend growers in world history. It's up 75,000% since it went public. We've owned it 15 years. They've grown the dividend 700%. The stock is up 700%. Nothing to complain. Also, the greatest French fries in the world, which I will add, I haven't had a single one of in a month now. Yeah, Ooh. because you're dieting, are you not? Yeah, well, well, but I still like the stock. <laughs> you still like the stock. All right. David Barnston, as usual, brings with him his dividend picks, and he's going back to the well with a couple of them. First of all, American Electric Power. Yeah, nobody can be bullish on AI if they don't think that data centers have to be uh, building a lot more and they need more power. The utilities are up quite a bit this year. And American Electric Power is our favorite utility company. Big high dividend around 4 percent, growing it at 7 or 8 percent per year. 
Got it. Next case is Chevron. You've recommended that before. Yes, we've owned it a very long time. And I just want to point out as an energy company, it's one that I think does really well no matter who wins next week in the election. And with Harris, you get less uh, new drilling and new production. So that helps the incumbent producers like Chevron. And of course, with Trump, you get other benefits that help Chevron up in midstream. Um, and they're not rallying the way that Exxon and others have. So we think Chevron with a four and a half percent yield is a really good way to play the American energy story, no matter who's president. Got it. Thanks, David. Grant, it was a great pleasure having you on the show. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to refer to my colleague here, David, just to see what he's got to say. Do you see any... Anything good on the horizon in the housing? Um, I think that the number is maybe hopefully closer to four and a half, but housing's frozen. He's right. I don't want the president to have anything to do with setting rates. Politicizing monetary policy is un-American. But here's the thing. Um, The Fed is pushing rates lower because they know they froze the housing market. But they froze it by having it artificially too low and then artificially too high. There's a happy medium at which sellers now become willing to sell. What's that medium? Well, again, markets are supposed to figure that out. Not a president, not a a central bank, in my opinion. I think it's going to be something with a four in front of it. Yeah. It's All right. going to be lower than it is now. It was a good debate. <laughs> I'm not sure whose side I'm on. <laughs> so you're on my side because you want houses selling in this country. Too many people depend on those jobs. I'm with you on that one. Grant, thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Uh, thank you, David, for being here for the hour. We appreciate that. Thank you.